you can only your your decision making process or your focus sort of refreshes i'm going to say refreshes every 90 seconds every 90 seconds you are going to be forced to make a new choice on whatever it is that you're focusing on whatever it is that you're placing your atten your attention and your energy on every 90 seconds your brain will like do a refresh and you will be forced every 90 seconds to decide am i going to continue this thought process and this thought pattern or am i going to choose a new something new and different I have this question from Susan, which I really, really love. And she says, can I discuss how to stop grazing when I'm not hungry? <laughs> yeah. I know that I relax and reward with snacks. That's great. Two hours. I, that I relax and reward with snacks. I know that, I, that the struggle will be lessened by adding to and replacing routines and new thought patterns rather than trying to force a subtraction of the food. I know this seems sensible and easy. Though I find I too easily give in to the voice with any with any little rationalization. It is okay, is it as simple as just saying to myself, this is what I do now, and then doing it? You know, um just let me think about that for a moment. Yes and no to that one. Yeah, that's a yes and a no question. Yes and a no response. So Right at the end here where so Susan essentially is saying, I know what to do. I know why. I, she's saying, I know why I do it. And I know what, so I've talked about, we talked about this previously. Like she says, I know what I want to do and I know why I do it, but I can't close the gap. Like how do I close the gap? I don't know how to close that gap. That's why she says at the end, like, so is it this? Like, is it just as simple as me going with well, this, is what I do now and doing it? Yes and no. This is why I say, um, Yes, in that you have to take an action. You have to take a different form of action. So, you know, you may have heard me talk about this previously in other masterclasses that, um, let me think where to start here with this. Okay. Okay, okay. I've got so many things that I want to say to you and I could easily talk for hours about this. So I'm trying to sort of condense it. Um you can only your your decision making process or your focus sort of refreshes i'm going to say refreshes every 90 seconds every 90 seconds you are going to be forced to make a new choice on whatever it is that you're focusing on <clears throat> excuse me whatever it is that you're placing your atten your attention and your energy on every 90 seconds your brain will like do a refresh and you will be forced every 90 seconds to decide am i going to continue this thought process and this thought pattern or am I going to choose a new something new and different so that happens every 90 seconds you have a fresh opportunity so yes you can say to yourself um, this is what I do now and doing it but so when I say yes and no what I mean is you can and I've talked about this um, in previous masterclass so you can only replace a habit you can only overwrite a habit by replacing it with a new one the only way to replace or upgrade a habit is to replace it with a new one you cannot so you've heard me talk about it you can't just empty the space you have to actually insert a new behavior into the empty space so when you know already that you relax and you reward yourself with snacks that's fantastic but it's the closing the gap that we need to be able to do so it's closing the gap so here this is what i talk about now as you've heard me talk about different parts of our brain okay so we have the habit brain that lives at the back we have the real you right? like well the real you i've said this before because i just think it's so funny like the real you lives at the front of your brain the back here the back of your brain so there's the front cortex and the and the well, there's the cortex and the subcortex the subcortex is where your um it's your automatic brain it's the habit brain so everything back here is automated it's irrational and it's unthinking back here it's just on repeat whatever garbage it happens to be living in there and it's been living in there for quite some time whatever is living in here it just goes on and on and on and on unless you insert and then repeat a new behavior insert and repeat that's the way the habits got in there to start with they didn't magically appear you weren't born with them you had to learn them and they were learned you know obviously initially when you were young by external you know copying and what other people said to do and all that kind of thing but now we're older 
older, wiser, smarter. You can make your own habits, but but you can only overwrite those patterns that are already in there with a new one. You can't just clear out the space and go, I'm not going to do this anymore. You have to say, I'm not going to do this anymore, and then take action on doing something different. So it's what we've talked about previously. Now, the other thing is that this part of your brain can jibber jabber all it likes and it does all day. That's the one that just goes, you're fat, you're ugly, you're stupid, you should totally eat the pizza, like you you deserve it, you're a water. And the reason that it does this is because, is because I don't want to bore you with science because it's boring, right? But there is um, a phenomenon called the, the spotlight effect, which means any time you try and do something different or possibly dangerous, your brain doesn't really know if it's going to be dangerous or not, but definitely different, you can very often suffer what they call the spotlight effect in that it just magnifies whatever it is that you're looking at and everything else just, get blurred, just gets blurred away. So if your brain thinks you're unthink like the, the uh, habit part of your brain thinks that you're trying to do something new, possibly dangerous or different then it's going to try and stop you not because it wants to sabotage you the voice doesn't want to sabotage you it doesn't doesn't even know what sabotage is it's trying to keep you alive don't do anything different don't do anything unusual just stick with what you know right stick with what you know the point is as i've said before that this part of your brain does not control your motor functions so habits live back here and it will it will send the brain signals to you, the real you. Like, will the real Kylie stand up? Yes, I will, because the real me lives at the front and I control my motor functions. That happens here. So habit brain can tell you to eat the pizza, can't make you get up off the, up off the couch and dull dominoes. Habit brain can tell you, go eat the chips and get the chocolate from the cupboard, can't make you get up and go actually do it. So... The real you here, all right, is where your intelligence lives. It's where reasoning, logic, language, all of that lives here. Voluntary movement, arms, legs, mouth, chewing, swallowing, right, all happens here. You decide, you decide, you decide. Identity, self-awareness, memory, also through the emotional center, which is also up here. That's where it happens. Now, why am I boring you with all this weird and random biology information? You're like, I, girl, I'm not in high school. I just really don't. Why are you telling me this? Because, because let me tell you a secret. When you know what's going on, it's not scary anymore. <sighs> when we don't know what's going on, that's when we freak out and we start thinking, what's wrong with me? Why can't I control myself? As I'm never going to get past this. Like, it's because it's a freaking mystery. And we don't know what's going on. I'm telling you, this is exactly what's going on. And now it's not scary anymore, right? Not a big deal. So not a big deal. Now when you hear the voice, you be, and it's be all up in your grill, you're just like, oh yeah, I know what's going on. It's not a drama. It's not. Because the voice can talk to me, can say whatever it wants. And it's going to, it's its job, right? It's going to keep you alive. But it can't make me actually do anything because a real me lives here. Real. The real Kylie. Will the real Kylie stand up? Yeah, I will because I control my legs whether they move or not. So I can do that. But um, no, back here. Back here, Kylie cannot. No, she's got to take a back seat. She's at the back of the bus, right? She's screaming for attention. She doesn't like being back there. But it's just where she play got placed. It's when the, the schoolroom of your brain got put her at the back, right? It's where it is. It's where it is. So this is really, really important to know. It's also super important to know. And again, you know, I know I've talked about this before, but it's so good. You've just got to know this to remember this, that that when you when you're seeing things, so you're you're thinking about, you know, I should totally eat those chips that I see there on the kitchen bench. Right. The the vision comes in, obviously, through your eyes, hits the back here where the habit center is, picks up on all the, the habits and the things that have worked for you so much before in the past to, you know, calm, and soothe emotional pain and anguish and even just the fact I'll say this for one second, but um, no, I will tell you. Even the fact of being tempted to eat the chips, sometimes it's not even an emotional issue. We just eat the chips to relieve the pressure of not eating the chips. Does that make sense? I want to say it again. Sometimes it's not even an emotional issue. <laughs> we eat the cake, cookies, pizza, ice cream, donuts, chips, pizza to relieve the pressure of not eating the cake, cookies, ice cream, cream donuts, cook pizza, right? Because you see it, you want it, 
and pressure immediately builds i see it i want it and it's not even a it's reminding me of my childhood or i'm having a a flashback or um i've had such a hard day and i really deserve it it's got nothing to do with that you are now going to want to eat to relieve the pressure of of not eating that you see it there you want it please as if you're not going to want it and the only reason you eat it is to relieve the pressure of not eating it does that make sense right actually goes so true yes it's not so this i tell you because i want you to know it's not always a big deal it's not about the deep inner secrets and your childhood and the things that it's it's not it's not a big deal we make this such a big deal like what's the problem and the thing and the it's, it might not be a problem or a thing. It might just be the fact that you really want to eat it. You feel like you shouldn't, but so then you end up eating it to relieve the pressure of wanting to eat it, not eating it. <laughs> I want to eat it and you eat it just to relieve the pressure of not eating it. Simple as that. It's just not a drama. The beauty of it is like, okay, that's great. I understand that, but what am I supposed to do? Well, if you really want to eat it, eat it. But just understand where the pressure is coming from, that it's not a thing. And that, tell me, tell me, tell me, how many times has this happened to you? Because this is how you know what I'm saying is not, I'm just not making up BS, right? I would see the chocolate. I would feel like my life was going to end if I didn't eat it. Like, oh my God, I have to have it. I have to have it. And then I would just not, for whatever reason, because I would make the decision I'm not. And then I would go do something else. And like half an hour later, I would go, I would remember that chocolate and go, I, I just don't even care about the chocolate now. It wasn't that I wanted chocolate. I, the only reason I wanted to eat it is because I saw it there and... And not eating it was building the pressure inside me because, because, because you know, obviously we have the association that's going to taste really nice, it's going to be really good, it's going to be very yummy. And the only reason we want to eat it is to relieve the pressure of not eating it. But later, when you don't, if you don't eat it and you go, then later on you'd be all like, I should, I had totally forgotten about that food. And you really do think I'm glad I didn't eat it because I didn't even really, I don't care now, couldn't care less, didn't want it, really didn't want it. So this is what I'm talking about now. I can't even remember the question. So, right, it was Susan about how to um, not relax and reward with snacks because she struggles. Yeah. And is it as simple as just saying, well, this is what I do now and then doing it? So, yes, 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 it is. Now, this was this was what I, I want to sort of, again, just put, put to the fore, that your true ultimate self is always in control. That vo And the reason I say this is not just like a heartfelt, message <laughs> your true ultimate self is always in control because your true self your true self lives up here in the in the cortex the top part of your brain and it controls your motor functions so you literally are always in control always always so when we start to feel out of control like whatever it's not that the chocolate controls you if you have gotten if you have gotten up if, you, if you've raised yourself from the couch and gone and eaten it, um, or ate it, eaten it, eaten it, then um, you made the decision. Now, I don't say that to like be like, well, you made the decision. I say that because all of a sudden you can flip the switch on how you look at it. You're like, you mean I have a decision? Yeah, you do. You always have a decision. You're going to feel tempted no matter what. That you cannot control. The voice telling you to eat, you know, the certain things and talking to you from back here, that's going to happen. That you can't control. You can't control your thoughts. You can't always necessarily control the emotions that they evoke. But you can always, always, always control your actions always there is never never not a time when you can't control your actions because it lives in the the most um advanced part of your brain that's where you are you hang out here x like you are here right you are here everything else back here your the habits live back here the emotional part of your brain is in the center but you're here you're here so you always have a choice with that i say to you take that and use it to empower yourself. 
Don't go, well, I guess I, I ate it. It was my choice. I'm such a loser. No, use it to empower yourself. You always have a choice. That means if you're going to choose to eat the ice cream or the donuts or the pizza, whatever it is, then eat it and own it. Own it. Like stand in your power and say, well, I'm going to make the decision to eat it. And therefore, if I'm standing in my power and I'm going to make the decision to eat it, I'm damn well going to enjoy it. I'm not going to feel bad about it. And I'm going to, and listen, let me tell you something. When you do that, when you're not, when you're eating from a place of power and, and peace, not panic, you will not eat as much as you would when you feel bad about what you're eating. And now you keep eating just to forget the pain of how much you just ate and to punish yourself for the kind of food that you're eating. It's a completely different ball game. Completely. Completely different.